Hey everybody, welcome back to some more early morning barking, talking about BPD and MPD by somebody that has both. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and do all the socially things scrolling past you on the screen right now. They're going there, look at them, see them go, it's clever look. And okay, don't forget to join the Patreon as well. There's lots of cool extra content on there as well as the Discord, which is rather awesome. Hi to everybody on the Discord. So, first of all, if you've seen the title of today's video, which I think is going to be something like leaving therapy or coming to the end of therapy or giving up therapy or something about no more therapy, I'm not talking about me right now. So if you know me and you're watching this, don't be thinking, oh God, he's leaving therapy. I'm not leaving therapy. Don't. It's not what I'm talking about. Bear with me. I was thinking about leaving therapy. Not like that. Not like I'm thinking about it as in I'm planning on it, but I'm thinking it about it in terms of what would it be like were it to happen, okay? And that brings up some interesting questions, right? You see, the, the other day I was actually, I was telling somebody about this channel and they were asking, where do you get, ideas for videos from where does the material come from and the material is whatever I'm going through this week right that's this is such a, a personal thing I'm not an expert on BPD and MPD or a psychologist or anything like that I can talk about me and my experiences and they're always happening and this person said like what what if you run out I what how can I, how can I run out? This isn't going away. I'm always somebody with BPD and MPD. I cope to it, to cope with it to varying degrees, but is it, I'm always that person, right? And even when I'm not, if, if there is some mythical future date where I can consider myself free of all BPD and MPD markers, then I'm the guy who managed to do that. And that's something in and of itself, right? And so talking about that, combined with this idea of stopping therapy, I have weekly gr group therapy. It has a fancy name that I never remember. And I was going to text somebody and ask them what it was before they start, but I forgot and it doesn't matter. But we sit and we talk, right? And it helps me work stuff out. It helps them work stuff out. And every part of it is an experience because even when you're not talking about your own problems, you're talking about somebody else's. And that teaches you skills and other things you need to have learned anyway. I mean, particularly for me in like picking up empathy and caring about other people and all of this stuff, right? So when it ends, what does that even look like for me? What is my end goal here? Is it to be better? What, what is that? Is it to be free of all markers? Is it to be completely unaffected by these personality disorders anymore? Is that a goal? Is that what I'm going for? In the long term, I hope so. Yeah, actually. But is therapy and going to therapy constantly forever and ever and ever going to get me there? Is it totally necessary? Will there come a point where I can stand on my own two feet with... Not no support, but the support of family, friends, close people, and most importantly, myself. And I've learned the lesson that therapy can help you, can make you change, can get you better, can stop me feeling all those bad feelings I used to feel that made me feel suicidal. I don't feel anything like that anymore. So I know that there's a way out of this and that I'm on my way out of it. But do I need hand-holding the whole way through? Or do I learn skills along the way that help me to get better at dealing with things and being introspective and looking back over my life, looking into where things came from, looking more deeply, questioning myself, all of this stuff. Can I learn enough of that and do enough of that and get good enough at that 
that before I'm technically air quote better, I don't need extra help. And I'm not posing this question as if I have an answer for it. This is entirely rhetorical. But you can see where this, this question alone takes me. Like, what, what about giving up therapy? See, I think I'm talking to a lot of people who haven't had therapy, who can't get therapy for a multitude of reasons, be that a lack of assessment, medical care, funding, whatever. And when I started doing these videos, what I kind of wanted to do was tell you what I'd learned in group. What had I picked up from therapy? What was the point of it for me? Because I figured if I could tell you that, then it might be, look, none of this is substitution for therapy, but I, I mean, look, if I tell you what I've learned, maybe you can work on that somehow. I, I still say, go in therapy. This is not, this is YouTube, right? This is not the same. This is not good enough. If you can get therapy, get therapy. Safety warning over, I guess. Look. So what I have learned is that I truly don't think at this point that therapy will be necessary forever. That there will come a time when I can get to a place where I'm comfortable saying, it's time for me to leave this behind and stand on my own two feet. I don't know when that will be. I'm not, I'm not saying it's next week or anything like that, you know. But I feel like it can be a thing. I feel like I can say, I don't need that extra support anymore. We can take the training wheels off. Because what I'm learning is skills. And they're coming slowly over time, right? They're not just, it, it's not a lesson. That's not how it works. We don't turn up and say, I've got this problem. And they go, ah, well, what you need to do is this and you'll fix it. That's not what it is. That's too easy. And that's that's what YouTube is, right? That's what I'm here for. Got that particular problem? I've made a video about it and I'll tell you what I did. And maybe that thing will work for you. That's YouTube. That's not therapy. Therapy is about asking yourself why you've got that problem. And saying, well, why is that a problem? And going into this and looking at where these things come from, where they started in our lives. And talking about how we feel about that and working through things like that. When it comes down to the actual intricate details of what's wrong and what to do about that, again, that's what YouTube's for. And it's not that no one ever says, hey, why don't you try this or whatever. It just, that's not quite, it's not a Q and A, it's a discussion. And what I've learned over the last two and a half years is to have these discussions internally. Not necessarily in some weird kind of imagining I'm in the group kind of way, but to follow myself down the same path. To start questioning, to take that time when I feel bad or odd or weird or excited, whatever. To take that time and say, how did I get here? Where did this come from? What's that about? What do I really feel? Because so many emotions get masked as other things. So many emotions are close to each other and, and, and feel like they might be this when they're actually this. And when you start planning things and thinking about things and talking your way through things, taking your time, it's about giving a, a reaction. And, and not sort of panicking. And a reaction to life, to, to everything. Like, where is this coming from? What is that? Spotting problems. A skill that takes some learning in the MPD side of things, I'll tell you that. Because there's still that, well, I'm perfect, right? I'm doing good. This isn't a problem. But what I've learned is to observe and look at what is real? And to put research into this, what is proper behavior? What should I be doing it 
like uh, you know you have to do this work you have to put that in yourself and no amount of therapy or group is going to do that for you that's just wanting somebody to make you better and I, and I don't think that's how it works with any mental health problem I think people can help you to get better but I don't think anybody can make you better there's no mental health equivalent of getting stitches or a plaster cast or an operation someone if you've got a big hole in you someone can make you better but if there's something wrong in your mind if you're struggling there then you have to do the work and therapy i think gets you started because i think there's a lot of work to do and maybe you might be lucky enough to look afford and have access to therapy for years and years and I, I kind of have, I'm of the thought that if you can, you should. Right? I, I kind of feel like I'll leave group when they tell me not to come anymore. But I'm starting to feel more like I'll be okay with it when that day comes. There's no need to panic anymore. There's no total unknowns. It's just a case of getting braver now. And I, I feel like that might be how the process is meant to progress. But anyway, I'm interested to hear what some of you have had therapy. Some of you have had therapy and left it. And I'd be interested to know what that's like. To go from something to nothing. Or from something to just you. Like I was talking about. I do worry about people that have been in my group and left. I, I worry about anybody who's who's felt uncomfortable in those situations and I hope they've found what they've were looking for somewhere else. I'm rambling now anyway. You take care. I'll see you later. Bye.